Okay, Coach, thank you. We are about 4,300 miles away from you there in Orlando as we come to you from the European home of the NFL, London, England. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one between the Seattle Seahawks and the New Orleans Saints. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21-yard line. On first and 10, here's Breeze. He's got a man open. It's Cameron Meredith. Five yards on the game's first play. Second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. To throw is Breeze. And this is a catch by Ted Ginn. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Now just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. That's complete to Meredith. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. With a quick slant, good for eight and a first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Breeze. And brought in by the tight end Cook. That throw good for four. It's second down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's say, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. One thing we do know, He's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. It's probably a pretty good sign here on the opening drive if your guys from the secondary are coming up and spilling things in the backfield. How about the adrenaline and aggressiveness that led his eyes to the backfield to run up there and make that tackle, setting a tone early for his defense. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. It was third and short, and they go flying past the marker for a gain of nearly 30 yards. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Now Breeze. He finds Matthews. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And so far, a very nice, methodical opening drive. This has the feel of a scripted drive that they rehearsed perfectly all week long, and now they're executing it on game day. Script looks good so far. Back to the ground, it's Camara. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. 
So play number 10 now coming. It's been a long opening drive, but this is third down. There's Breeze. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. From six yards away. And the Saints take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, it's Wilson. That's complete to DK Metcalf. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's Rashad Penny, first carry for the former San Diego State Aztec. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Defensively, they rallied the troops to force fourth down after that seven-yard pickup back on first. An ideal start defensively. They already have the touchdown. Now they get the stop. Just like they drew it up on the chalkboard. Does that sound dated? Right? Am I, am I out of touch a little bit? <laughs> it's all right. All right, grease board, heck, computer, exactly what you want, though. Score on your first drive, stop them on the first drive defensively. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, <laughs> and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice and it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Where he's able to find a veteran again, and he'll be corralled right around the 34. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
You really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Breeze now. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. He loses four, and it brings up fourth. Well, they opted not to run it. They completed the pass on third and two, but they lost yardage to bring up four. Well, give credit to the guys on the other side of the ball. They snuffed out the play, but it does bring into question one, the play call, because they didn't run the ball there. They could have run it, and two, just not getting it. That's got to be deflating for them. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Now Wilson on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf, but it's going to be second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They run it with Carson. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Let him go by a little too easily there. Well, that's what we saw on film, isn't it? His head goes down oftentimes when he goes to punch when he's trying to block. And when you do that, you can't see your target. He went right past him and made the play. Wilson from his end zone on third and long. Out to his left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. So from their own end zone here, this kicks away. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first down. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. And that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. On second and 12, Breeze. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Shotgun now for Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. 
Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Now here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he'll take this one up to about the six-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. On second and nine, Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. They'll try to run for it with Penny. And he'll have the first down as he's up to about the 18. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. What? 380! Check, check, 47. They're going to need some therapy after this. 380, And that'll set him back five. Let's go. Let's do this. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. This is Carson. And a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And he stopped immediately there. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet. 
and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. My Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The Saints on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Breeze. Gets it to Meredith complete. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And the Seahawks have picked it up. From the 32 now, here's first and ten. Following the fumble recovery, it's Wilson. He's got the tight end, Vanette. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. To throw is Wilson. Over the middle, it's complete. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Von Bell up to make the tackle. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. On second down now, it's Carson. A great move, couldn't free him. Taken down at the 10. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. On third down, Wilson. Forced out to his left. He can, and he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run as they are now on the board here in the first half. Well, the defensive coverage was good, so good he just decided to make a play of his own and it worked out. Yeah, you often wonder if they think to themselves, was the coverage too good to allow him to run the football? But I think you'd rather take your chances with him doing exactly that, and he beat him on that play all the way to the end zone. Extra point up and through by Myers, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. 
That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. A little bit of daylight on that first down run. Sets them up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Let's go, Big series right here. From the 36, Breeze throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn, and it's third and short. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Here's Kamara trying to run for it, and he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Here's Breeze to throw. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. There in coverage to knock it away, Marquise Blair. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Now Breeze. And this is Cook with a grab. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The Saints on third down. They've hit four of seven. This time they face a third and two. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the dart ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Now a run on first down is not going to get off the ground as they will get him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now on second and 13, Breeze. And Thomas has it. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. So offensively on this drive, two of two on third downs, and now they face a third and inches. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Breeze now to throw. He throws, and he hits the slant route to Thomas. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Breeze's throw on target to Cook, and he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down.
Breeze now on first down. Completes this one to Meredith. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints have taken the lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Lutz good on the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never what have enough today? points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And come analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. There's Wilson to throw. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should sit on it here because of what you just said. They haven't made anything happen offensively. Getting ready to go into the half, give them a chance to take a deep breath, exhale a little bit, and start over. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Now Wilson. And it's hauled in by Ed Dixon. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Now here's Michael Dixon. He's been terrific so far. Here's Sherrills. 12 yards on the return that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What, what do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll work this back to right around the line of scrimmage and surrender there, making the stop that time Bobby Wagner. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And an alley to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He'll get 15 and a Saints first down. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, this will be taken in at the one. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down, it's Carson. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. <laughs> Throwing now, Wilson on first down. It's caught, lock it. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 10 yards and a Seattle first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Now they're able to swarm him behind the line and his rough night continues. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. To throw on second and six, Wilson. Very difficult night for the guys on offense. They've got to be looking at each other in the huddle and on the sidelines. How are we going to find some open space to complete a pass and find open room to run? This defense all night long has squeezed down the passing lanes, made plays on the football. It's really been a thing of beauty for them. He's got a figure all day long prepping for the game. They had to have talked about it again and again. Squeeze passing lanes and we'll be in great shape. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. 
Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now a give right side. Carson looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Eighth play of the drive, fourth coming, and they need eight yards on third down. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers from the right hash. This from 48. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and ten at their own 21. I can't believe they even let you play. Working from the gun, it's Bree's. And brought in by the tight end Cook. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Breeze now. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. To throw, it's Breeze. And he finds Cook. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. On the ground, this is Kamara. Flash the stick skills on that run, but then stop shy of the 35. In on the stop, Bradley McDougal. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Go, go, go. Check, check. Right. On second down, Camara. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. 
Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Bree's going to throw. That'll be complete to Cook. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. To throw is Breeze. Well, this is caught by Gill. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call it? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now, Breeze again. And Cook has it. Left side. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Now Breeze on third down. And that is incomplete. I think mean, that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Lutz puts this one through. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal, you did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes, you don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now. First and 10 at their 25-yard line. From the gun, it's Wilson. That one going to be complete to David Moore. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 19 yards there on the catch and run. 
when the hitch route is run really well. That jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space. All you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. He'll buy some time right. He may try and run for this. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. To throw is Wilson, escaping the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Now it's Wilson. And he's going to keep it here. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Wilson leaves this one with Penny. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for a young front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. This complete to lock it. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. Wilson to lock it there for the Seahawks first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? They, let's, see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Here's Wilson. Stepping up, he'll try and run. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. Looked at me like the adopter of my kindergarten teacher always said, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check, he'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. He may try and run for this. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. I like his effort there. He got it done on his own. But let's face it, he puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. They run for it with Carson. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Chris Carson 
Taking it in. As they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point. Oh, this is what I love about calling these games. Fourth and goal. This is all about leverage. Who wants it more? And who's going to get it done at the point of attack, the line of scrimmage. A very important extra point there. Up and good. And, partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. And maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So second and in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. They'll run. This is Kamara, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, it's Breeze. And this is going to be intercepted. Trey Flowers picks it. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. After the interception, here's Wilson. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. Cameron Jordan, his second sack of the night. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. We talk about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. 
Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's Breeze to throw. Again has it complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Breeze now on first down. And this is Cook with a grab. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Now Breeze. It's brought in right side by Gann. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. On the ground, Kamara. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 14 yards is the pickup. First down, New Orleans. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second and five now. Breeze. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. He's at the 40. Pass the 20. 10. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. In a tie game, fourth quarter, that's about as big of a defensive play as you can possibly make. And it didn't happen by accident. That was, that was scouting right there. They've seen things that have happened before. They knew in certain situations the type of plays they like to run. Read it and were able to go after the football, get it, and take it into the end zone for a touchdown for themselves. Myers connects on the PAT, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. They told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. 
Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great ready. defense. You're You're darn ready. right. They did something to disrupt that timing. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. There's Breeze. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. Shotgun now for Breeze. That's complete to Meredith. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 there in a New Orleans first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Bree's able to find the veteran again. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Throwing again on second down. Breeze, and Thomas has it. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 32-yard line. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big-time completion. Marie's now on first down. This is caught by Gann. And down inside the 15 he goes. Ready? Bree's going to come up here first and 10. And he's 5 for 6 now throwing the ball on this drive. Into the red zone. It's Breeze. And that is caught. Oh, what a catch at the 5-yard line. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second and short. Nice, well-coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. The Saints in the hurry up here. Clock continuing to roll. Breeze to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Quentin Jefferson in there to take him down, and the clock will roll exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yardage. They've been letting them drive right downfield, but they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? Here we go, here we go, here we go. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Back to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Cameron Meredith there to make the grab as they can now tie the game with the extra point here in the final two minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all our score as he sends this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. 
The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Here's Wilson. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. David Onyemata able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Clock running, and the Seahawks, they're running, too, trying to speed up to the line of scrimmage. Wilson to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Now Wilson. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. Start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. He'll get 15 and a Saints first down. Four quarters, not enough. We're all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate. And that's caught inside the 30. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. 
A partner, great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night, everybody.